Hey everyone, and welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards, and this is a recipe demo of spicy corn soup from the Farmer's Market Cookbook by Richard Rubin. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. It is summer here in New York City, which means an abundance of fresh corn in addition to super stinky subways. This recipe is a unique way to use up about 10 ears or so, and the soup can be served hot or cold, so you can proudly serve cold soup other than gazpacho in the summer. So get your fresh corn and shuck it. If you've never shucked corn, stay tuned until the end of the video and I'll show you how. It's a great group activity even for young kids. Now once your corn is shucked, we're gonna cut off the kernels. Now this is similar to my creamed corn technique, except here we can cut off the whole kernel. In creamed corn, we just cut off the very tops and then push out the meat and the starchy juice. For this recipe, we'll blitz some of the corn in a food processor to get a creamy consistency. So as you may have been seeing here, getting a good angle on holding the cob and keeping it all in a protected area is important because otherwise it takes a toll on your body and your walls and your countertop. I was able to go much faster when I started in the middle of the cob rather than trying to start at the very edge. You could use the dull edge of the knife, the spine, to push out the extra meat and juice, but the next step of this will be boiling the cobs into a broth, so we won't be wasting the flavor or the starch. All right, now our corn is shucked and cut, and we'll make a broth. So let's take a break from the corn and thinly slice two onions. And roughly chop two cloves of garlic. Now don't worry too much about the size of any of these. Once the broth is finished, we blitz it in the food processor to cream the onions and the garlic with the corn. The cobs are also going into the pot, so depending on the size of your pot, you may want to divide your cobs into smaller pieces so they all fit. If you do decide to do this, just cut at the thinner ends because cobs are really tough to cut and put the cobs, onion, and garlic into a six quart pot along with two quarts of vegetable stock, which is eight cups for us Americans. Now bring it to a boil and simmer for 30 minutes covered. In the meantime, let's roast some peppers. Take two whole poblano peppers and two jalapeno peppers and place them on a hot skillet, preferably cast iron. We aren't putting any oil or liquid in the pan and cast iron holds up the best in this situation. Now I've heated my pan over medium heat just until it's barely smoking. We'll blister the peppers whole, turning them frequently. Of course, they won't lay flat on their own. So I used a cast iron press to get the entire skin blistered, not just one little spot. If your pan starts smoking a lot, turn down the heat. We don't want to ruin your pan. Now while those do their thing, let's pull out that food processor and puree half of the corn kernels. Now it took me a solid two minutes of running the blade to get it smoothish. Now let's check on those peppers again and turn. And once they're completely blistered, transfer them to a bowl and cover them using a lid or plastic wrap. We want to trap the heat and humidity because that helps the skin to separate from the meat. And let them sit for at least 15 minutes or until they're cooled enough to handle. The stock is probably ready by now, so remove the cobs and discard them and pour all the stock into the food processor or a blender and puree the stock to break down the onions and garlic. Return the stock, the pureed corn, and the non-pureed corn to the soup pot. And let's check on those peppers. After chopping off the stock, it was pretty easy to remove the skin and seeds under running cool water. You should have just the meat left. Now, the volatile oils are still very active, so be careful with your fingers. And they were so strong for me that the pepper kick was tickling the back of my throat, and I was coughing just cleaning them. Well, that should have been my clue that this was going to be a super spicy soup. Then dice them finely into tiny pieces. If you're sensitive to heat, I'd use just one pepper of each. Now maybe I got super hot peppers, but I almost could not handle all of this. Now add the peppers to the soup pot, along with Texas tarragon, if you know what that is. I don't. Uh, the recipe says you can substitute one tablespoon of cilantro mixed with one tablespoon of tarragon. I don't have either of those, so I used marjoram. 
whatever you use, you want it to be slightly sweet and herb to balance out the peppers. Now bring this all to a boil and reduce the heat to a simmer and gently simmer for 15 minutes, stirring frequently to keep the corn from scorching on the bottom. Then juice a lime and when the soup is ready, season with the lime juice, salt and pepper. If it's too spicy, you can add a generous dollop of sour cream or creme fraiche to tame the spice. Now for a quick shucking lesson, it's pretty self-explanatory. Peel away the leaves until you start to see the silk or the hair. And then it's easy to snap off the bottom with all the leaves still attached. And then pull off the silk. It's near impossible to get all of the silk off the cob. Even scrubbing the cob with a brush doesn't get all the silk. Now it's fine to eat. It just looks like hair or string in your food. So please remind yourself and your guest that it's fresh corn, not poor hygiene. So that's it for this recipe demo of spicy corn soup. Get the ingredient list below or at cookingcompaniontv.com slash corn soup. Subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards and thanks for watching.